Previously, we wired our Festo Didactic Stack Magazine Trainer to our PLC Trainer, and we have tested all of our I.O. And this one, we're going to work through some basic ways that we can do some machine sequencing. Now, first, let's switch the air off to our trainer and just talk about how this is supposed to work. We have a container and we have a lid and we need to assemble them. First, you drop your lids into the magazine and then the operator is supposed to place a container here, press a button for it to do its process, which means this cylinder needs to extend out and then this cylinder needs to come down and press the lid on. And we're gonna start building on what we learned in the conveyor exercise, because I believe evolution-wise that is where you start, is usually you start with either sealing in or you do start with latches. We use the seal in in the conveyor, so we're gonna continue with that. And then we're gonna talk about some other ways to do it. I actually have a whole series on different ways you can sequence machine steps. Here is the sample program that we already had. And really, we're going to start fresh. Let's just highlight all these and go ahead and hit delete. And let's do take a second to review because you did have a video that you hopefully watched before this. But here are the inputs that we have and here are the outputs that we have. And just in case you need it, you can do a screen capture right here and figure out your wiring. If you're scratching your head about any of this, then check out the previous video. Let's go back to Progue 1 and bring down a Go Look for a 1. And we're going to use the green button to start our process. So I'll put green button here. And then we know that we need the solenoid to extend. So we're going to bring an output energized down. and we're going to put our double acting cylinder advance. Now, the way this initially is set up, we have to do this for a certain amount of time because we don't have any sensors on our cylinder. Coincidentally, when you guys do your first projects, I usually see you're not putting sensors on your cylinders. So we're going to go ahead and go through this and see where we can start to have issues and see how the sensors could help us. But for now, we are gonna do it based on time. So we're gonna bring a branch around this output and bring down an instruction block. And this will be a TON. And we're gonna call this our pusher extended. You cannot have spaces and names. So we need pusher underscore extended. We'll click okay. And we are gonna call our preset the pusher extend time. It does default to data type of time, which is correct. All right, now let's go ahead and review this. Let's make sure we understand how this piece works. So let's go ahead and download this. And if I went too fast through creating that or you're unsure how to configure drivers or anything, just hit that subscribe button. We have lessons on all of that. Now we're only going to be able to see this one time, but I'm going to go ahead and put our container in. And then when I press the green button, the cylinder extends and it sets on there. Chances are that would shove it back down. But once that starts moving, we're going to need to make sure it's out here. And that's what we're going to use that timer for before we extend this down. So let's watch it now. Even though we're not going to be able to see it happening, let's see what exactly was going on here. So I'm going to press the green button and immediately we get the qubit on the timer. And the reason for that is this pusher extend time. This says pusher ND time. We can mouse over it and that gives us it. But there's another way we can fix this. And let's go ahead and do that. We're going to disconnect. And let's right click any of the white space and go to property. And here we have our element width. Change that to five. And that will make everything a little wider. It does make it throughout the entire program, which can be a pain. But even here, double acting cylinder, I'm missing part of it. So I could go and I could put a six here and we could widen that out more. Now that's getting a little bit wide. I probably needed a shorter name here, but just so you know, you can do that. Let's go ahead and download that. And also just in case you're wondering, no, you can't do that while it's online. You know, just now it's grayed out. I can try to put something there, but it's not going to happen. So you don't have to be offline to change that. But now we press our green button. We can at least see what that is. But let's go ahead and put some time in this pusher extend now. Oh, let's start with three seconds. I don't want to be too long on this. But I do want us to be able to see what's going on here. So I press my green button. My elapsed time is not three seconds yet. So the queue is off. And now we hit three seconds of so the cube that's on. So we can use 
this qubit to do the next step, which would be to retract this cylinder out of the way. Now one, don't forget from the last exercise how we got this data into our offline program. Because if I go offline right now, make a change and download again, we're gonna lose this value. So we want to disconnect. And if we wanna remember what that value was, we're gonna right click our micro 850, and then we're gonna upload with logical values. Now we can disconnect, open up Prog1, and we're gonna bring a new rung down and go look for a one. And we're gonna be looking at this pusher extended dot Q. So we just start typing pusher. And it's not there, but if you go over to the end of it and you put a period, then you're going to get the Q bit. And if you're not familiar with all the timer bits or the types of timers, we do have a video on that. Once that's done, we want to retract our cylinders. So we're going to put an output energize in, and we are going to go find our double acting cylinder retract. And let's go ahead and download that. And in typical fashion, this thing's not even ready to start. And so we've got a lot of good learning opportunities because right now our pusher is still out. And right now we need it to be back so we can even put the part in. But let's go ahead, hit our green button because it is going to try it again to extend for three seconds. Then it did not retract. Now let me show you why it did not retract. Is watch the two solenoids. I press the green button and one M1 illuminates three seconds later one m2 illuminates but when you have them both on they're fighting each other this is not going to do anything so let's watch it in the program and see what we can do to prevent that from happening so i press my green button the solenoid energizes three seconds later we get the q button three seconds later we get the q bit and that's turning this on so we want this to turn off if the qubit is a one. Now, when you're thinking through this, you have to think, when do you want things to be on? And so we want the double acting solenoid advance to be on when the qubit is a zero. So let's disconnect and we'll bring down a go look for a zero. And right there, we're going to put our pusher extended dot Q. And we'll download that. I press my green button. It extends, three seconds later, retracts back. So after this is retracted, we need this cylinder to go down and press our lid switch on. So again, we're gonna use another timer here. Go ahead and disconnect and bring down a branch around this and bring down a instruction block. And this one will be a TON and we'll call this push or retract. And then similarly, we already know we need this Q bit here. So go look for a zero at the pusher retracted dot Q. And then we can bring another new rung down and go look for a one at that same pusher retracted dot Q. Then put an output energize for our single actin solenoid. And we'll go ahead and download that. And now, if we press our green button, extends out, three seconds later, it did not work. Well, and welcome to Tim Wilburn's training where there's always a new learning opportunity. And the issue is we did not put a value into our pusher retract time. So we have three seconds extending. Let's go ahead and start by putting three seconds in our retract time and now, we press our green button, three seconds later, comes back, three seconds later, it goes down, we let off, and it should be ready to go again. Now we have a lot of work to do still. Now we'll put our container in place. We'll go ahead and drop a few lids into here, and we press our green button, part comes out, retracts, and puts it on. Now we need a lot of time and work, but we can get there. So our extend time and our retract time definitely need some work. And here's where running switch to switch can save us a lot because that way we could run out, see a switch and immediately retract. And that'll save us a lot, especially we don't have to account for where. Because right now we're, and same as you guys, we're going to try to get this super optimal, but everything's brand new. As things wear in, they're going to slow up a little bit. And that's where you start seeing issues with time system. But let's just time it and see roughly what we get. So 
one one thousand. One second is plenty. One second is plenty on the retract. And we do have a lid press time that we might need to do something for our process. But let's go and adjust those. So we're going to change this one to one second. And we'll change this one to one second. That way we're over one second on our extend and one second on our retract. I press my green button, extends, retracts, and the lid fixes on. I right, know we could call it quits right here, but there's more work to do because there's two issues right now. The first issue is we reload this. The operator has to hold their finger on this the entire time. There's the first issue. The second issue is, let's say this was an actual process where we needed to make sure it was firmly pressed or, or pressed for a certain amount of time. There's nothing to say that the operator doesn't go and hit the button, watch it go down, and just let it off like that. So we didn't get that firm press. So we need to solve both of those problems. And we're gonna do it with that same seal in that we did learn in the last one. And we probably want a way to stop this, which kind of gets us to the next issue along with that is if I press the green button and I just stop, then it stops. So we got a lot of little things to work out. Here's where I see all of a sudden that, call it interlocking logic, start to get really clunky, but let's, let's keep going through it. And then I'll direct you to some ways to learn about sequencing. Let's go offline. And first, yeah, we, we definitely need the operator to not have to hold the button. Now I'm not gonna do it on this line. I'm actually gonna bring another one down. We're gonna go look for a one down. We are gonna be looking for the green button. We are gonna bring a go look for a zero down and we're gonna use the red button. And this is the same conveyor logic that we did in the previous videos. Only this time I'm gonna put an output energize and I'm gonna put this as cycle start. And what can you not have in tag names, but spaces. And then we're gonna put the seal in around the green button, go look for a one at the cycle start button. That way it remembers that it has done it. Okay, now this one's easy. We're just gonna change this to cycle start. Now let's think about the pusher cue. How can we use the cycle start button to also get this thing out of the way when we wanna stop it? So we would want to retract it when we're not starting the cycle. Now we want it to win the extended cue or that. And when you hear that or come out of your mouth in a sentence, that's when you wanna branch. So we're gonna go look for a zero at the cycle start. And so that should get our retracted back out of the way. Let's go ahead and download this. Well, and right away we have an issue because I sat there and said we wanted this to retract when it was, the cycle was not starting, but now this causes an issue with this retract. And we're gonna go a little bit further down this road just because I want you to understand the pitfalls of the logic you start with. And then we're gonna talk about some ways to sequence through, but let's go ahead and disconnect and let's bring down a go look for a one on this pusher retract because it also needs that same cycle start as up here. So cycle start. And we'll go ahead and download that. And right away we have another learning opportunity because now our pusher definitely isn't retracting. So let's go in here and have a look. And yeah, so we have this cycle stop. Well, now it start. Now it needs to be up here. Now we're gonna get you just far enough that we can get through this. And then I'm gonna show some other sequence and methods that way we can really nail down how to do that. We only want this to time if the pusher extended Q is there. So we're gonna copy that. We'll paste it right there and let's go ahead and download that. All right. Now we press the green button, goes out one second later. Well, it didn't work, did it? And you know, and this, this is something I, I really do struggle a little bit with with connected components. The issue is uh, when I downloaded, I didn't upload logical values. And so our value is bad. In fact, see, remember we changed this to a one second? I forgot to upload that. And you know, though this is good repetitive things to remember because yeah, it bites me out in the field too. Now, if we press the green button, extends out, retracts, goes down, 
There we go. All right. So next deal is, I just realized that they didn't hold the button the whole time though. So let's try it one more time. We press our red button, it does reset it. We press our green button and let off of it. There we go. So now we're pressing a certain amount of time. And now after a certain amount of time, we want this thing to completely reset. And our reset will be the same as pressing the red button. So once we start, extending our cylinder down. We want a timer here, and then we're gonna break the cycle start button. Now let's do this the right way with the parameters here. The, this is one that does trip me up about the micro is we have to go offline, right click, upload. Then we can disconnect again and open up Prog1. If we go to our local variables, then now we have values in these for our initials. Okay. Last step on this one before we start talking about ways to sequence machine steps is let's go ahead and bring a branch down around our single actin cylinder. And we're gonna bring one more TON down, TON. And we'll call this one our lid press time, or no, just lid press. Because then for our preset, we will use our lid press time. Once this Q is a one, we want to stop our process. And we can do that right up here at the red button because it's just another stop. So go look for a zero on our lid press dot Q. And we'll download that. Okay, now the last thing we do before we test this is we need to put a value on, on this press time. And I'm going to make the press time five seconds. And now we'll go over here, we'll press the green button, cylinder extends out, retracts, comes down five seconds later, retracts back up, and we're ready to do it again. Now we'll put a container in, we'll put a lid in, press our green button, presses down, five seconds later, it's ready to go. That's the way I see people end up putting together sequencing when they're starting out. And I think that was an important exercise to go through. Now let's talk about common ways that we see machine sequence operations happen. And then I want you to pick your favorite one and try it on this. And at the end of this playlist, I will pick my favorite one and I will show you how to do it with it.